Place value is really important. So let's see how we can use it to solve addition. Often you'll actually add numbers and not even think about place value, but you will be using it. Now let's look at the numbers we're adding. We've got 18 plus 11. If we think of the tens, we've got one 10 and we're adding one more 10. So we've actually got two tens. So you could write that on your piece of paper as you're working through this in your head. Then we look at units. We've got eight units and we're adding on one more unit. So eight plus one means we've got nine units. So you can write that down as 29. And seeing the units and the tens rods there just helps you visualize what you're doing. Now this one's a little different. We've got one 10 and we're adding on one 10. So we've got two tens. But when we come to the units, we've actually got 8 plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12, but when we think about what that means, we've got 8 units and we add on 4 more. So really, we're creating another 10 and 2 units. 12 units is the same as 10 and 2 units. So rather than writing 12 in the units place, which we can't do, we can change our 10s to 3 and put our 2 in the units place. So 18 plus 14 equals 32. Now you might also try another way. When you've got 18, what about if you actually count to the nearest 10, which is 20? That means you've added 2, and then you've got another 12 to add on, which makes 32. So there's always more than one way you can do these. Now when do we need to regroup? Well here's an example where if you look at the tens place, we've got an 8 plus 5. So that's going to need regrouping. And so for problems like that with larger numbers, I might use a vertical way of recording my answers and working it out. Now I've used a place value table here, but you don't need to do that. You can write them down your page. Just remember to line up your columns. So if we put our numbers into the place value table, 481, and we're adding 352, we can start adding our units. We get 3. When we add our tens, we've actually got 13. So we can actually rename 10 of the tens to one of the hundreds. And then we've got three tens left. Now in our hundreds place, we've got four plus three, which is seven, plus the one that we regrouped. So we've got eight in the hundreds place. So in that case, writing it down our page means we can see the regrouping and we're less likely to make a mistake. So our answer is 833. Now let's try that same problem a slightly different way. We'll leave our answer there though, because it's going to help us compare as we go along. Why don't we break our numbers each into the hundreds, the tens and the units? So we're actually going to add four plus three hundreds and we get 700. If we add our tens, we've got eight tens or 80 plus five tens or 50. So that's 13 tens or 130. So let's add those two together, and that gives us 830. So we're already part way through. And now if we add our units, we've got 1 plus 2 is 3. And we add that on, and we get 833. Now it's a little simpler than the way we did it just before, but it's very similar. So it's a shorter way of doing it once you become a bit more confident. Now we got the same answer. So we're happy with that, and that's a great way to practice the same problem different ways. What about an even shorter way? Well, I'm going to give it a go. What I'm going to do is actually work it out just going across my page. 4 plus 3 is 7 in the hundreds place. 8 plus 5 is 13 in the tens place. But I can't write 13, so remember I'm going to write 3 and put an extra little 1 above my hundreds place. And 2 plus 1 is 3 in my units place. Now that's a way of actually still coming up with 833 because you're recording your regrouping as you're going. So it's a much shorter way.